So for me, what I had learned, it is impossible to experience consciousness when the brain is not functioning. So it was the scientific curiosity that we started a study in 88 in Holland uh, with a total of 344 consecutive patients who survived a cardiac arrest. And 18% of those patients reported the near-death experience with all the classical elements we know. And then we wanted to know if there was an explanation for the cause and content of this exceptional experiences in consciousness. And to our big surprise, we found that when we compared the group of 18% who reported the near-death experience and compared it with the group of 82% who did not have memories of this period of unconsciousness, there was no difference at all. So the duration of a uh, cardiac arrest, two minutes or eight minutes, or the duration of unconsciousness, uh, five minutes or three weeks in coma, or religion, education, gender, it didn't make any difference. So the important conclusion was that it is a mystery why those patients experience an enhanced consciousness during cardiac arrest. And this was important because there had been so many theories based on retrospective studies that this experience should be caused by lack of oxygen to the brain or that just were hallucinations or uh, side effects of drugs or, or just uh, trying to be interesting or something. Just they made up stories. And we were, could prove for the first time, this is still the, the largest study ever done, prospective study on the death experiences, that there is no physiological or psychological or pharmacological explanation for the studies. People tell that they change, and this is the kind of objective aspect of this subjective experience. And we wanted to know if this transformation of those patients was due to the cardiac arrest itself or due to the near-death experience. And what we found that there was a specific transformation only for patients who have a near-death experience, which we can call the non-local information exchange. They have instantaneously contact with the feelings of other people. They know future events. They know when, when someone will, will die. And that is uh, so hard to accept this kind of information which you receive not by your senses or not by your body. It's the non-local information. And so the essence, what we learned from the studies of Nidath, which was published in The Lancet in 2000, 2001, is one of the most important medical journals. The most important aspect as well is that we know that in cardiac arrest there's no function of the brain anymore. So the, the, the clinical death, which is called the period of unconsciousness when the, the heart doesn't function anymore and the breathing stops, you will die within five to ten minutes if there's no CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation started. All patients will die. So it's the process of dying really. And when you measure the electrical activity of the brain after an average of 15 seconds, it's a flat line. And the average time needed to resuscitate patients is at least 60 to 120 seconds or more. So all those patients in our study and all the other prospective studies of survivors of cardiac arrest must have had a flat line EG in a non-functioning brain. And in this very moment, they had an enhanced consciousness. So the challenge to concept, this never proven assumption that consciousness is a product of the function of the brain. It cannot be true. And that's an important conclusion.